Hello, uh, welcome to today's class. Today we'll talk about applications of texture mapping. So last time we talked about the general overall structure of texture mapping. Also we talked about the uh, texture filtering issues related to undersampling or oversampling. Today we will talk about uh, uh, today we'll talk about how we can utilize this texture mapping for uh, uh, for different uh, uh, useful applications. So along that line, we use them to the uh, to add the detail to the scene to design the realistic scenes. So last time we talked about the uh, general structure of texture mapping. Now I'd like to talk about some of the uses of the texture mapping. So as I mentioned before, texture mapping is used to add the, the details the, uh, to to a scene. So as I mentioned before, the, it's more easier to paint or capture image than the just three D geometry. So we use the, this the texture mapping to model complex light, also the, to model complex geometry. So the, if you actually if you see the uh, if you see the, the history of the, this computer graphics related to the, this the rasterization technique is that uh, in a lot of cases actually there are certain there are some of the phenomena that we can handle very well within the uh, rasterization. Then you can you can think that you can find the paper that using uh, proposing the using texture mapping. To address that issue, so as you can see, texture mapping is one of the key techniques to overcome the various problem of the rasterization technique. So there are a lot of applications or uh, uses of the using the texture mapping uh, for adding the details of the realistic feature within the this the uh, rasterization, which is the uh, common use in the uh, this game. So one of the very common usage of texture mapping is uh, uh, is the uh, modeling light. Uh, for example, so there, uh, here actually this actually I uh, grabbed this one this image uh, from uh, some of the uh, old this OpenGL book. So there, uh, uh, basically here you can see that we are getting the light from the this uh, through the window, right? And then we can get the, this kind of one, right? But uh, back then it's very difficult. I mean we can do that, but it takes a lot of time to 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 have this kind of scene. So actually, the, we can use the texture mapping to add in the, this, the uh, kind of these details of the, the uh, lighting effect here. So the line map is the uh, line map is another. It's just a uh, uh, type of texture mapping to the texture. It supplies the lighting directly. So the, since uh, here actually the, we assume that the lighting environment doesn't change. So the, we actually the pre-compute. In other words, we we bake this kind of light map and using that. Uh, for the, uh, for representing complex lighting within the scene, along that line, also we commonly use the, this kind of environment maps. So basically, this is actually uh, one of the environment map that capturing the this the, uh, the surrounding lighting here. Uh, basically, the uh, right uh, in this day we uh, we can capture uh, very easily about the this, uh, around, uh, we can very ca easily capture the surrounding scene with by uh, using the this three sixty the camera right. So then, if you capture the that uh, uh, 360 the uh, the image, then you can have uh, this kind of one, right? And then you, you can see that there's some of the very bright region here and there, right? And then uh, you can see that actually these are the some of the light. And then when you actually render this kind of the model, uh, some some people may want to use the the lighting that are uh, li uh, this the uh, lighting as shown in this kind of the uh, environment map. So at that case. We can we can use we can capture this kind of environment map with uh, this kind of shape, and then we can use this uh, texture. It's just uh, uh, some of the spherical shape texture as a lighting instead of the just using the point light that we talked about before. So the, this is actually one example of environment map. It's a representation of scene around the object, and then also the, you can pro, you can support the lighting also the uh, uh, it can also support the re uh, reflection, which I'm sure later on. Uh, this technique uh, proposed very long time ago, but the recent is the development of the 360 camera. It becomes more popular. It, uh, it, uh, uh, yeah. And then the light map. Basically, the uh, here uh, the light the concept of light map is uh, uh, it's a very classic technique. I don't know whether you know the heard about game of the quake, but actually the uh, light map also used in the this very old game. So here, if we just using the geometry texture, then within this game, we can get this kind of the uh, very flat, flat uh, look, right? But the, uh, we wanted to adding more detail here, so the, you can see that we are getting some of the light the, here and there. I mean, for example, we have some of the uh, this kind of the fire, right? And then we want to adding some details that are related to the, this kind of uh, this light. 
then we, we can, uh, uh, then uh, one simple way of the supporting this one is using the light map uh, uh, and shown here. So uh, here you can actually the design the some of the uh, I mean the depending on the you see you might get the light right. So actually the uh, you have captured that kind of lighting uh, lighting uh, within some of the these two detections. Basically there here I didn't show the these two de uh, two detection, but you can see that there are some of triangle and then we use the light map over there and we attach the light map onto the, this kind of the very crude this the geometry. So as you can see. Uh, basically, the, we, uh, when you rasterizing this triangle, we also consider light. We actually get the lighting energy from that light map. Then, uh, when we actually uh, when you rasterizing triangle, we consider the texture with this light map. Then we can get the more this the realistic scene like this. We are getting some more light here and there and so on. Also, there uh, this is more the, uh, another example. We are uh, here. Uh, we just uh, if we just uh, rasterizing triangle texture, we don't get any light. But uh, we we pre-compute the light uh, uh, here. Then you can very easily see that light actually there uh, 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 around this fire there there should be light, right? So we bake we pre-compute we compute that kind of lighting effect onto the two D map, and then we consider them when you rasterizing uh, this triangle, so that you can get the uh, this region to uh, more brighter here, more brighter, but other. Uh, other than the other uh, rest of area. So uh, based on this one, we can very easily uh, support the uh, more realistic look in a very efficient way. So uh, basically, the, we, just use, we just need to use the one more texture to adding the different detail. That's the main benefit of the using the light map. And then compared to the, the general texture map, the light map also simply just 2D texture. But here, compared to the regular texture map, the light map just consider this the energy, the uh, light energy intensity. So also we don't need to use the high resolution. So we can use the low resolution, and then uh, we just are encoding the this kind of li lighting energy in a kind of the uh, rough way. Then considering that to the uh, to the light map, we can get the, this kind of the result. Uh, also, there one or more the uh, common way of the uh, common way of texture map for lighting actually shadow map. Think about it. So so far, uh, we uh, we talked about the, this concept. We can rasterize, we can rasterize this triangle, and then when you rasterize this triangle, we also consider light, and then we uh, we actually the, we we compute the ambient diffuse specular term. We all uh, we perform the form illumination and we compute the color, right? But suppose that there's a light here, and then you can see that uh, uh, when you restaurant this, uh, this part, so you can see that the, the other part of this T part block the light, right? So that we cannot get the energy from there, right? So uh, uh, this region, this part actually in the shadow region, right? Since we, we cannot get the uh, light energy from there, right? But there, uh, there's no way we can, we, uh, there's so far, I mean, there, we talked about a lot of techniques so far, but there's no way that we can know the, uh, whether we can we can get the light energy from the light source or not, since that, uh, since uh, all, all the, the uh, illumination technique that we talked about so far is the local illuminations. We don't know the, whether there's a, we don't know the, whether there are some other triangle that block the uh, block the, uh, the getting the light energy from the light source, right? Uh, then how can you do that? How can you support this uh, shadow shadow, right? It, which is actually very common uh, visual effect. So there uh, they have a lot of techniques, but there. Uh, uh, we can just uh, use the, the shadow map. Shadow maps nothing but uh, uh, nothing but a, a 2D map actually. So here, the, to support the dish, uh, to, uh, to know the whether the, this pixel are uh, within the shadow region or not, we need to see that whether this pixel uh, at that pixel when you rasterize this pixel, we need to know that whether we can get the light energy from the light source or not, right? That's the, the question that we need to answer. How, then the question is the how can we answer that question, right? So to do that, uh, uh, within the rasterization, uh, we actually we first draw the we rasterize this triangle uh, in the perspective of the uh, light source here. So actually, the, this is actually the our view here. We are looking at the we are looking at the tip, tip, uh, this tip part from here, and then support that their light source. So to to for, to to create the shadow effect. We first we rasterize this triangle in the perspective of the light source. This actually the uh, actually the shadow mapping technique is the two-pass algorithm. Since we need to rasterize this exact same triangle twice, 
Uh, first, we actually the rasterize this triangle in the perspective of the uh, uh, the light source, and then we utilizing that information when uh, 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 and when you rasterize this triangle again further our the viewpoint. That's why we render the we rasterize this the tip angle twice. So actually, these two paths algorithm usually. So here, uh, we rasterize this triangle in the light source. And then we can get the, this kind of the depth map from the light source, right? It means that uh, the light can see this region, right? In other words, uh, this, re this, pixel, this, re this pixel within the, this region within the teapot, we can get the light source, right? Uh, then, how, then we rasterize this thing again in the perspective of the, this the viewpoint. Uh, uh, over there, we utilize this information. Suppose that we are rasterizing this triangle. And then we are uh, actually uh, then we uh, we are now uh, we are processing this pixel. Then the question is that uh, we need to whether we can get the light source. Uh, we, uh, the question is that whether we can get the energy from the light source or not for that pixel. Then how can you answer that one for that pixel uh, for rasterizing this one in the perspective viewpoint? Uh, we know the this 3D information about the, uh, this pixel, right? We know the, this x y z coordinate. Then we project this point into the this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, in the perspective of the light source. Then uh, then we, if we project this point here into the this the space, then this point mapping to the there, right? And then we check the whether uh, we know that this point mapping to the that pixel within the uh, in the in the uh, light map light uh, the depth map from the light source. And then then we check that uh, whether at that pixel we can see the, this pixel or not. If we do that, uh, along that pixel, we can only see the, this portion, maybe, the, right? So basically, by accessing this the light, uh, this the depth map, we know the, we can, whether we can see the, this pixel or not. If we can see the, from here, if we, if we can see this pixel, then it means that we can get the light energy from there. But the, here, in that case, uh, we can see the, if we look at the depth map from here, maybe depth map may be here, right? In other words, we cannot see the, the, uh, this pixel then we cannot get the light energy, right? Then we can cancel the, then we only consider the, uh, at that case, we only consider ambient light since we are not getting the, the light energy uh, from the light, uh, 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 this uh, light source. So, so that actually the, it can be, the, it looks more darker. Uh, also the, when you the rasterizing this, pix, uh, this triangle at the pixel in here, then we also check, we project this pixel in the light source then we know that this, uh, this region mapping to there, and then if we see the that depth map from here, then maybe the depth map stored here actually the, uh, 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 corresponding to this pixel. In other words, we can see the we can see the this pixel in uh, here, right? Then it means that uh, then we can we can get the light energy, right? So we are adding also we are evaluating specular or specular sum, adding those illumination energy to there, so it looks more brighter. So uh, basically, there is two path algorithm. So the uh, uh, first of all, we rent, we rasterize this triangle at the perspective of light source. We get the, this the depth map. So this is nothing but shadow map. This is the depth map, but it's two D image, so we can treat that as a texture map, right? So when you consider then uh, at the second pass, we rasterizing the, this triangle in the uh, in our viewpoint. We consider this we, we consider this the shadow map, and then depending on that. Can see that whether we can get the energy or not, right? Depending on that, we can add in some of the, the specular uh, diffuse terms so that if we get the energy, it looks more brighter. Otherwise, it looks uh, darker. So that at that uh, the, by doing that, we can support the, this kind of shadow map. Uh, we can support this uh, shadow effect. So the, uh, this is a uh, one way of the using the this the shadow map, uh, this texture mapping as a shadow map to support the, this the, uh, 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 shadow effect. So basically, the, it's a little bit difficult to support the, this the, uh, shadow effect directly within one pass within rasterization. So the, uh, actually, the, there has been a lot of techniques to, to, uh, to do that. But here I'm showing the, this, this is a very old technique, but it's one of the very groundbreaking techniques uh, to support the shadow map, uh, uh, shadow effect within the rasterization by using the, this the shadow map. So another one is that now suppose that I have uh, this kind of the teapot, it's a very glossy, it's a uh, uh, metal-like one, and then you can see that we can we can see the surrounding region on the surface of teapot, right? I mean the uh, this teapot looks like a mirror, so it, it reflects energy, like, like incoming light energy, right? So that actually we can see the this uh, surrounding image that actually reflected under the surface. 
Then the question is that we want to support this effect, this uh, reflection effect. How can you do that? So along that line, we can also use the environment map. So let's look at here. So suppose that here actually you, we got this T part, this is actually the uh, middle light one. Then this is our view direction. So for that this is our viewing, uh, viewing direction. Then the, 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 this T part mode that we just treated is the, the perfect mirror. Then in my reflector, uh, actually the, uh, uh, by using the SNES law, we can compute the, the uh, reflection ray, something like that, right? And then this viewing direction reflect here and then ending there, right? It means that uh, at the view at the view direction here, we can see the color from uh, uh, we can see the color of this portion, right? The color from here, uh, from here, and the reflected there, and then we can see that one, right? Then how can you do that? So if you're using the ray tracing, we can directly support this one. Uh, but actually, I will talk about this one later on. But usually, ray tracing is kind of slow, so we need to uh, we need to have a way of the supporting this effect with the rasterization in an efficient way. So now we are using the, this the environment map, which is nothing but the, also shadow map. First, suppose that I, uh, uh, we, I want to support the, the reflection effect under this model. Then at the center of this model, I, uh, here actually I used this, uh, this kind of this uh, spherical environment map. And then uh, I, uh, actually I draw the, these scenes. I draw the, these scenes under, under this, the, under this the, uh, in, in this case, the case, right? I draw the, I restaurant these scenes in the, this kind of this uh, circle shape. So typically, the, you might, some of you may wonder that how can you do that, but the, uh, uh, the typical we are just using the, this kind of cube map instead of, um, the, uh, you can just, it might be more easier to think about it the, to draw the, this the environment map in the, this cube map. So then here we look, uh, in this case, I want to look at, I want to capture the surrounding scene within this the cube map. In other words, here at the center of here, I look at, the, I look at the, this direction. Then I, I actually the, I rasterize the scene uh, uh, from here along that direction. Then I, I capture I got this 2D image right. Then I uh, I actually put this image into there. And then I, I do the, the same process on the other the uh, uh, on uh, uh, on the other the faces. Then I can get the, I can capture the, this the, uh, environment in, uh, the surrounding scene. And then I can capture uh, this kind of the, uh, uh, the uh, environment map in the cube map. But the, uh, 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 basically, the, I, I'm not going to talk about the details of how we can actually rasterize this scene under this spherical environment. But we, uh, suppose that we can do that. Then, suppose that we, we capture the surrounding scene under this the kind of circle shape. Then, at one time, given this viewing direction, in, ideally, I need, to, I need to get the color along that direction, right? But the, uh, under the, the spherical environment map, uh, there's no way, I mean, we already captured the scene uh, at the center of here, right? So there, there's no way that we can get the, the color along from here, along that direction, right? But we approximated the, uh, the ray from here to, to that direction. Instead, we just, uh, sh uh, we just align the center of this ray into the, the center of the object, right? And then, uh, then if we, actually, we can just uh, access the, this, the, uh, this particular texture from, uh, 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 we can just, uh, we can directly compute the texture, the texture index uh, uh, along the that, uh, along the that, Direction. So basically, the, to do that, uh, to represent that one, I actually use this notation. I access the, this environment map as the uh, index of the, this reflection ray here. But I will say this approximation since I cannot direct act, I cannot direct compute the, the color from here to there. But I just uh, I get the I can get the, this approximation. So basically, this approximation technique. But the the, question, the, the real benefit is that. I can, I actually the, capture this the, uh, surrounding scene just using the this the, uh, just using the regular rasterization and then I, I, I actually have I, I back them in the two D map something like that and then uh, and then uh, when I also the rasterizing this the, uh, when I rasterize these scenes uh, when I uh, if I want to support this reflection I, I access the, this the, uh, spherical environment map and then I can actually get the uh, I can get the, this reflection effect. That's the main idea of the using the environment map supporting this reflection. So the, here actually I got the uh, very old image that I got from the Terminator 2. So actually the, when I was very young, I saw the, this image. I, I think that the, I, 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 I mean the, some of you may not know the, this Terminator 2. But the, actually the, when, I, when I was young, when I see the, this movie at this scene, I was very amazed. How can it can support the, I mean the, this kind of the reflective the, 
the uh, terminator is kind of liquid one, so actually this is actually metal like, so it reflects through this environment. So the, this pilot can see the his image, which is actually re uh, reflected uh, reflected image on the surface of the, this the, uh, metal like the, the uh, robot, which is I guess a tip uh, a tip uh, tip out or something like that. So I was very wondering how can we how can we design this kind of scene. But uh, I don't know the, what was the act actual the technique here, but uh, basically the, uh, we can just use the this environment map. So uh, for example, we put the camera here and then, the, and then we uh, capture the, this, uh, 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 we actually capture the, this side, and then, and then uh, basically the, the, uh, the image, the video that captures through, the, uh, captures through the, this camera, we can treat as uh, this kind of environment map. And then when we and, and then when we then we rasterize this uh, uh, when we uh, uh, then we draw the we rasterize this uh, character uh, while we are doing that we also the using that environment map that we capture deeper uh, so that actually we can have the this one so this actually the uh, also we can use the uh, uh, the better one is the rasterization uh, even even to support this one uh, but actually the uh, I'd like to point out that we can support this kind of thing by using the concept of the environment map actually. So this is a, uh, 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 we can also use the, uh, this is the, there could be the many different ways of representing environment map. One of common one is the cube map here. So, so instead of the, using the, this specular shape, we put the box and then, then we can capture the, uh, we, can, we can render the scene in the multiple times and then we can get the images from the different faces of the digital box, right? And then uh, we store each one as uh, the texture map. Then, based this one, given the, the viewing direction, also reflect direction, we can get the RGB color. So in other words, we can get the surrounding color of the day. But uh, if you follow the, my discussion on the environment map, you can very easily see that what's the problem of the environment map, right? So, uh, we need to, the, uh, to support the, this reflection, we need, to, the, we need to compute the environment map, right? But if the uh, scene is actually dynamically changing, then every time when the triangle is actually moving, or the light moving, then we need to, we need to compute this environment map again, right? Uh, but uh, for example, the, the computer this cube map required the, uh, maybe the six times of the restaurant, uh, rest, uh, six times of the restaurant in the scene, which is the, takes a lot of time. So it could be expensive to update dynamically. So also the, it's not completely accurate, right? So the, as you can see, in, uh, in this case, we, uh, what we want to know that I want to know the color along uh, from here to there, but we approximate that one from here to there by using the environment map. That's the, the issues of the, the one. Uh, for example, uh, here, we, uh, we apply that concept to here. In, uh, here, that actually metallic, uh, metal like the, the uh, sphere here, you can see that it's the surrounding the scene on the surface of this, uh, uh, on the surface of this metal ball. Looks okay, but when you when you actually come closer and then uh, depending on your scene, it looks very odd, right? I mean, the, on the bottom actually I had this kind of very black uh, black like water, but the, uh, it looks very the odd shape, right? Because of the you can see that uh, uh, because of the approximation of this reflection effect by using the environment map, there are the issues like this, right? That's the one of the main reason that the uh, this the uh, some of the pixel movie. Uh, you might heard about the courage, right? Which is actually the uh, released at the uh, long time ago, 2006. Uh, at that time, actually, this is one of the early movie that adopted ray tracing. So at that at that case, we need to have a, they have a, this kind of car, uh, a car with the metallic uh, surface that we need to support the, this kind of reflection effect. We can use the environment map, but there are some of the artifacts. So the, uh, this is actually one of the early movie that adopt the uh, ray tracing since instead of the using the environment map. Since if they're using the environment map, there are, uh, 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 there are certain these artifacts which cannot be used in the, this kind of realistic movie. So from, uh, from then, uh, since then, actually ray tracing getting more popular and then in some of the recent movies, a lot of cases they're using the ray tracing. So far I talked about the using the texture mapping for adding the, this, the uh, supporting the this, uh, lighting effect. Also that we can use the texture map for modeling geometry. There are, uh, so basically we store the complex surface detail in the texture rather than, uh, rather than having the, the triangle itself. So uh, there are many different uh, the, the names, but I will go over them one by one. 
uh, one is the actual bump mapping. Bump mapping. Uh, bump mapping is nothing but here, this is the original geometry. We may have the, this kind of the, uh, 2D texture named as the bump map. Here, uh, uh, by using the bump map, we modify the normal, not the actual geometry. Here, uh, when you rasterize this sphere, we get the normal, right? But uh, uh, instead of the, the dark using the, the normal data from the geometry, we also get we store the certain the uh, here actually the we, we store the, this the, uh, uh, delta I mean the, in each pixel in here we we actually encode the, how we how much we actually the change the, the normal normal uh, uh, of the uh, normal of the corresponding the, the uh, triangles. So suppose that if we got the normal at that point we got normal here. And then at that uh, uh, at the corresponding texture, if we got the uh, let's say the uh, if uh, then uh, uh, we actually sh uh, we shift the we adjust this normal along the that uh, that direction and so on. So we modify the normal, uh, not the actual geometry. So we treat the texture map field as a kind of height field, and then in each pixel we uh, include the sum of delta, the partial derivative, uh, partial derivative used to change the normal along the this the UV direction. And you can treat that the, uh, you can change the, the normal in the, the, the two D two D given here and there are you can treat the, you can change the normal direction along the x direction or the y direction something like that. We store that information and then if we're doing that, we can actually the, we can uh, make the surface uh, to appear deformed by the this high field. So basically, we can have the, this kind of end effect like here. So we change the the normal uh, here. Then when you change the normal, it actually it has a different uh, appearance depending on the light, right? So some of region looks more darker, uh, also some other region looks more brighter. You can see that when you see this one, it looks like a little bit bumpy, right? So uh, it just, that's why it, it got the name of the uh, bump map. But it's overall it's nothing but 2D texture, and each texture is stored the 2D information, basically the, the, the partial derivative uh, that changes the normal. I didn't uh, talk about actual the definition of here. That's not very really, uh, uh, important here. I I like just to uh, introduce concept of the texture mapping that can be used in a different application. Another one. So here, given the geometry, I might have the, this kind of the uh, bump map. Uh, then I, I didn't really talk about how we can actually interpret this pixel and uh, this information uh, uh, how we, uh, along uh, in terms of how we can actually change the normal. Uh, but if we do that, actually, we can change the normal here, so that actually uh, some of the region looks more brighter and some of the region more, uh, looks more darker. Since the normal change and then since the normal change, illumination effect may be the vary. But if you look at the silhouette, it looks like there, there are some, some, some sort of actually there, uh, a, bump, a bumpy surface. But if you look at the silhouette, nothing has even changed. That's the actual limitation of the using the bump map, since we didn't really change the geometry. Uh, here, the, basically, we just change the look appearance, right? Another one, another uh, uh, this one is normal. Uh, another one is normal mapping. Here, the, we just utilize given the original normal map, we just adjust it, right? But the, uh, that's the bump mapping. But normal mapping, we just replace normal rather than the tweaking one. So suppose that this actually the original mesh, uh, original mesh has a four million triangles. It might take a lot of time to rasterize, right? So ideally, we, we want to use the, the simplified mesh. Uh, 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 then we can actually rasterize them very in an efficient way. But if we're just using this mesh, then it looks very blocky, right? I want to, I, uh, even though I use the very small number of triangle, I want to use, I want to have the original look. How can you do that? Simple one is that I capture this image in a, this the, the 2D texture. Then I actually treat, I actually the, over there I capture the normal instead of the writing down the RGB value. I store the, this the normal value, uh, normal vector in the that uh, two D map. Then when I rasterizing the this triangle, I use the normal uh, that I got from the this the, uh, uh, the this two D texture, which is nothing but normal mapping, normal map. Then when I use the this the normal that I get from here, then I can get the, this kind of the uh, realistic look, even though I use the very simplified mesh. That's one of the benefit of the using the the texture map in this case as a as a form of the normal map. To add the to add the, these the details, realistic details to the scene with a small number of triangles. And again, uh, you might some of you may say that uh, here we got the we store the additional texture map, right? But again, the texture map is kind of the 2D regular data structure, so it's much more easier to access and not just easier, it's much more efficient to access the, this 2D array 
instead of the, just uh, 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 instead of directly handling the many many of the these triangles, which is nothing but a, a graph, a graph which is irregular data structure. And another one is deep, uh, displacement mapping. Here actually we we use a texture mapping just to uh, to, uh, to directly the, uh, adjust the surface point. So actually, some of the recent GPU can support this uh, uh, this, this displacement mapping. So far, I just have, I didn't change the geometry, but I just changed the normal. But here, uh, we just uh, we we just directly changing the geometry. So the for example, when I rasterizing this one, I just also the change the this uh, this uh, uh, XYG information of the this uh, vertex coordinate uh, based on the some of the uh, uh, some of the texture mapping, and then I actually change the geometry. Then uh, at that case, we, we treat that as displacement mapping. We displace is the actual RG, uh, actual X Y G coordinate of the each vertex, each the surface point. Another one is opacity map. So uh, so far I talked about R G B channels, color right? But there are uh, typical viewers use alpha uh, alpha channels. Alpha channel is about uh, this uh, uh, transparency. So for example, uh, so there, this is the. Uh, uh, Suppose that I want to do, I want to actually the rest, I want to have this kind of appearance here. Then I got the, at that region, in this case actually the, uh, here my opacity value is the one. Uh, opacity, uh, uh, basically it's opaque, right? Then it means that I can, I, I, I can, uh, I can see the, this texture here. So at that case, I got the color from there. And then that region is the, my, I said the, my opacity is the uh, zero. It means it's transparent, right? And then uh, I don't get the color from here. Then I just get I just using the any background color so that actually I can see through the this the, this geometry. Then uh, then how uh, uh, then how do we know that whether this uh, whether uh, which region is the opaque or not? Uh, that information I got the I get it from the this alpha channel alpha channel alpha channel is the, the usual representing the whether this uh, that portion is opaque or transparent. And in this case, this black means the zero means actually it's opaque zero. Which is the transparent, and the other one, the white value is one, which means opaque or, or, or opacity become one, so that I get the I can see the only this one. So the uh, uh, along that line, I will typically use the, this alpha channel, and then this map uh, with RGB and alpha channel, we 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 call it this opacity map. So far, I talked about two D. Also, some of you asked whether we can use three D texture. Yes, we can also use three D texture. Here actually, the uh, you know the if you look at the some of the scene, uh, we can we might have this kind of the three D three D shapes, right? So the uh, one can use the one can use the triangle to represent this one. Uh, also, the we can just use the three D textures. So in other words, solid texture. Solid texture is nothing but three dimensional data structure assigning the value at every point within the three D uh, within the three D texture. So the then. Uh, uh, early on, this three texture turned out to be very effective uh, for representing materials such as like this marble and wood, actually. And uh, then, uh, if you look at the, some of the, the movie and games, actually, uh, then we might have the uh, we might have a different base like this, but with a different different actually shape, different this the pattern. How can you do that? And each individual artist can draw the different uh, uh, different bases with the different patterns. But uh, uh, this uh, this kind of three texture, the, the design, this three texture takes a lot of time. So this solid texture, three textures are usually defined in a procedural way, procedural function rather than the tabular uh, tabularized the function. Like the, 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 this one is nothing but index, so the two D two D map that I talked about so far. But what, what what's the meaning of this procedurally the, uh, uh, this uh, procedural uh, function? In other words. We just using a certain algorithm to generate this kind of pattern. Actually, the uh, that actually the uh, uh, random number theory, uh, random number theory applied to here. So the uh, this actually the I'm just showing. I just briefly touch on this 3D solid texture here. But this is actually one of the groundbreaking advancement in the field of graphics. In other words, using the some of the algorithm. Uh, algorithm to represent uh, this kind of certain art artifact, right? Uh, in this stage, very common idea to just using the some algorithm or program to support uh, this kind of the artifact. But back then, it was actually groundbreaking idea. 
Okay, so far I talked about the, the last time I talked about the general overall, overall the procedure of the texture mapping. Also, I talked about some of the issues of the texture mapping related to the undersampling, oversampling. And today I talked about the different application of using the uh, texture mapping. I talked about the reflection map, environment map, and a light map, and uh, uh, the bump map, all kinds of some other the maps that module, uh, then adjusting the geometry of the light map. There are actually there are many other applications of texture mapping. So there are actually tons of paper using the, this the texture mapping technique to support the uh, very interesting uh, effect, visual effect within the rasterization. Okay, next time now uh, we will move on to the ray tracing. So there uh, uh, actually there the main reason why we have to uh, why there why there are so many papers using the texture mapping is that it is fundamentally uh, flawed. There are fundamental issue of the using the rasterization for supporting very different this uh, uh, visual phenomenon. Uh, but uh, basically, the now actually I will talk about ray tracing, which is actually the very natural concept for supporting the visual visual phenomenon, which I will talk about next time.